That's me trying to do the theme song that you just heard then. Was it the, was it the same? I don't even know what that accent is. Let's just call it the Evish accent. Guess what? I'm getting the puppies. I'm getting the puppies. They're coming today. But baby girl, baby girl, her name is Silva, the 10-month-old Kelpie, had the babies in the pound. She had seven. So she's coming down from Tamworth on the transport with Susan. We've not used this transport company before, but apparently they're very good. So love that Susan is coming because that's my mother's name, as you all know. And there's seven of them. And it looks like the dad may have been a husky because the markings are husky, like the puppies are doing husky things. They're looking like huskies. To me, they look like blobs. But to our other dog rescuers in our group who are, you know, really into that kind of thing, which is weird to be into it more than me. There is no one into it breeds more than me. But when they're puppies, I just go, that's just a, just a pupper. That's just a baby. Um, so I'm getting them. Uh, follow my stories. Follow my Instagram. I will keep you abreast of the situation. So I'll have them. Like, you know, 12 weeks before you can adopt the puppies out. So next three months, my address is if you want to come over and have some puppy cuddles, anyone. (laughs) But hopefully we'll find beautiful homes for them. So it was Easter behind us by the time you listen to this. How was everyone's Easter? Did you eat fish on Friday? I ate fish today. So guess what? Probably be eating fish tomorrow because, you know, when you're a single woman, you live on your own, as my Rachie knows, leftovers are life because you can't just make one meal. You can, but that meal isn't uh, small enough. It's never small enough for one person. You've always got leftovers. So yeah, of course I've got leftover salmon from today's lunch and I'll be having it tomorrow. (laughs) But you know what? I might have it for dinner tonight. I would like to have seafood, but who can afford seafood on an Easter Friday? Honestly, it's like seafood on Christmas Day. It's just, it's it's not, it's not fair. And I'd also like to say that something else that's not fair is negative gearing. And, you know, this week um, it was all about the RBA not reducing interest rates again. It's all about landlords being lumped into one category of meanness and it was all about mostly the Greens really coming out and saying you know the governments of past have done so much they have given so much assistance to land owners property owners um, that it turns out a lot of people didn't know but those uh, concessions and those handouts and everything well to date they have totaled um, half a trillion dollars since they were implemented. That is unfair. (laughs) It's really unfair. You know, Australia has the great Australian dream. America has the great Australian dream. The great Australian dream was always in Australia to own your own home, and that's quite literally impossible for so many people these days, Um, and that's unfair. Australia is all about being fair and giving everyone a go, But we're not doing that with this, and that's unfair. It's not nice to own that many properties and then up your rent for the people that are living in them because you can't afford your mortgage repayments. It is an investment. It is a risk, as we had Victoria Devine, the beautiful Victoria Devine from She's on the Money, explain to us. And if you haven't listened to that episode, please go back. We'll put a link in the show notes so you can just click on it straight away and go back and have a listen. It is so interesting, fascinating. All I want to say, you know, is unfair, (laughs) but some people say there's no ethical landlords and I guess in the very essence of owning properties, there isn't because, you know, you should own a property to live in. But property investment is a business. So just like Victoria explained to us, big business can make it really accessible and ethical because if they're a big business and they take the big risks, they have a lot of, you know, backup 
so they don't have to up your rent. That's where your rent control can come in. The reason rent control doesn't come in in this country is obviously because of the government, because it's small investors taking huge risks, buying a property or more and um, not being able to handle the risk should the RBA not reduce their interest rates. So they just pass that on to the renters and the renters (laughs) are already renting. (laughs) And to think that you buy a property and think that someone else is going to pay your mortgage, no. Let's just put this straight out there. This is the one thing that annoys the shit out of me about people that own property. It's your mortgage. That property is their rental. It is not their mortgage. So despite what your mortgage does, they should only be paying for that rental and the value of it. So if your mortgage goes up or down, that doesn't matter. The value of that property doesn't change because your mortgage goes up. It's still a $500 valued rental. Why would you pass that on? Why would you pass that on? You have to be a selfish person to do that. You must be. And the fact that you're allowed to do it makes it even worse that we haven't regulated this yet. And, yeah, we can blame the bigwigs and everyone, but at the end of the day you can be an ethical landlord. My landlord is an ethical landlord. He has put solar power panels on the roof. All of my rent includes electricity, gas, internet, water. It's all in there, plus a gardener. It is all in there because he is an ethical businessman who is running his properties like a business and he's making sure that the people that live in his properties are really great referenced renters and he wants to keep them in there as long as as possible. So he takes care of them and in turn, guess what happens? We take care of his properties. I treat this property like it's my home because he treats me so well. That's your difference. You up your rental on them and they either move out, they can't afford it, or they just, they don't have any respect for you and your property. Start being a bit more caring if you are a landlord. And I know that renters can be absolute bastards. They can, but that doesn't mean you have to be. Okay, be a great landlord, be that great landlord and real estates. Oh, my God, that's for another time. (laughs) I know my real estate is trying to get my landlord to up my rent. And last lease, guess how much he put my rent up by? Guess. Rach just said $20 a week. Less. He put up $60 a month, $60 a month. So he's said to them, because he didn't do it the year before, He's they've clearly like, oh, you know, you can put up your rent. You know, you can. You know, you can. Because they get money from it. And he went, oh, finally, he went, okay, give us 60 bucks more. And they would have gone, oh, don't, damn it, damn it, you and your ethicalness. Anyway, that's my rant about that. We haven't had a useless fact for a while. Oh, have we? Yeah, we have, like a couple of weeks ago. But. This is a good one. My Rachie gave me this one. Thank you, Rachie. Hey, 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 you're the best. Uh, Where does the term mad as a hatter come from? Hey, mad as a hatter. Well, the mad hatter was on uh, Alice in Wonderland, the mad hatter. Um, who she met or did he bring her down the rabbit hole? I don't know. I've never seen it. It looked way too trippy for this kid. You didn't already know this one because it didn't originate from Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland. It, its origins date from the 17th and 18th centuries, well before Lewis Carroll's book was published. Here we go. In the 17th century, in France, Francais, poisoning occurred among hat makers who used mercury for the hat felt. Wow, that's amazing. Do you know what felt is? No, I'll tell you because you can't speak. It's uh, wool. It's wool stretched, stretched, stretched. 
and stretched and stretched and then you put more wool and you put more wool and you stretch that and you put more wool and then it fuses it all together. And then the best way to do it is with water and dishwashing soap. So I guess they used to use lard back in the day uh, because that was in soaps. So it was horse fat actually, so not lard. Anyway, the Mad Hatter disease was marked by shyness, (laughs) shyness, irritability and tremors that would make the person appear mad. Well, 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 that is a good one, Rachel Hart. I heart you. Um, That's a great one. Mad Hatter's disease, the Mad Hatter. Oh, she was, she was mad as a hatter. Now you know. We don't call people mad anymore or insane or anything like that because it's very ableist. But you can be mad angry. Let's be mad angry. Okay, not let, let's not be now. I mean, it, I was five seconds ago when I was talking about rentals, but I'm good now. I hope you got something out of all of that. And if you are a property owner and you're seething at Evie right now, sorry, not sorry. <laughs> you know me by now. You know me by now. Love of justice, peace of justice. God, it is literally my middle name. It is literally a family name <laughs> in my family, justice. We love it. You've got to be fair. You can't take it with you, by the way. You cannot take it with you. You're not supposed to talk about your legacy and let's not ever do that, but you don't want your legacy to be that you owned seven properties and you went, you know, on the horizons of the sea every day, every year because, you you know, you were making so much money off the um, – Oh, of people that couldn't afford to pay your rent. Oh, come on, anyway. Thursday, I'll be in your ear holes with a beautiful Shezzy. Shezzy Daniel. Or Cheryl Rogers, as she was once born. We'll talk about that. Hope you're all wonderful. Have a good week. Have a good couple of days until you've got these dulcet tones in your ear holes again. See you. See you. Ciao, ciao.